All right, good afternoon, everyone. Here's something a little different that I've been exciting to, very excited to share for a while. Shout out to my man, Starving Jesus, for the inspiration. It's been a really hectic beginning of the year, but I'm hoping to actually experiment and get a lot done. This is a rough draft of what I'm looking to expand to next. This is completely impromptu, on the fly, real stuff. And let me just switch to what I actually have going on. Instead of just doing games, I've been ignited to refollow an old passion of making music. And even though this is not the best software, this is something to let me practice what I want to do. And you can see in the corner, I have managed to get my hands on a used but very new looking Launch Control XL. Now even hold this up to the camera a little bit better so everyone can see. There's eight faders, a bunch of different pads to help with loops and sampling, I believe. I don't have the actual manual. Again, I bought this. Thank you, Guitar Center, for treating me so well. This, all the faders work very smoothly. Everything looks great. I really have no reason to believe that there's anything wrong with this device. And that's why I have Fruity Loops an old piece of software that I've had for a while, something I'm very, very, very familiar with. I used to remix from Reason into Fruity Loops and use Fruity Loops as my MIDI control, basically. And it's very similar to what everyone does with the newer software. I'm hoping to expand my horizons into Ableton very soon. That's the end goal. That's what the launch pad works with the best with. But... Because it's basically a glorified mini control, MIDI controller, I'm going to try out this device now. This is my first time plugging, plugging it into my computer. There we go, all lit up. Would have been a little better with the light out. Everything lit right up for me. We could hear Windows do its little beep 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 and hopefully that means everything is okay and it simply registered the new device. So far I'm really excited just to give you an idea. That's me activating it with the mouse just so you can see that everything in this software does work already. It's just a few basic VSTIs that I have set up going to expand my horizons on that eventually as well and i'm surprised that i'm able to run both fruity loops and obs off of my laptop made some decent hardware adjustments and it worked out pretty well now i have to do some fancy things there it is right there launch control xl port 205 nice enable there we go. Link note on velocity to velocity. Link release velocity to release. Nice. Foot pedal controls. I'll leave that on for now. Nice. Now, here's the interesting thing is the MIDI mapping part. I can see that it's receiving the information, but what it's changing, I don't know. And that's what I was hoping to find out. I'm not sure where they're mapped to by default. They send it to user. Nothing's mapped yet on the user template. And this isn't like the Stream Deck where you get a template or a program. I'm sorry, it's not like the Stream Deck where you get a program that allows you to map the buttons through the program. This here is all MIDI mapping to begin with. So I'm going to right click this and I'm going to do linked controller. There we go. That's simple. I linked it and I already have this fader here. You can see the master 
right here going up and down as I move the fader up and down on the controller. Look at how smooth that is. Thank you so much, Guitar Center. I am astounded. I am absolutely look and zero is zero. Awesome. I this is what I wish I had years ago, and I never would have stopped making music. Oh my god. Because there was I didn't really do everything else. Oh no, kind of override to one channel for master. But alright, it kind of knows about it. Everything else is more or less mapped. This number two is mapped to two. This is the master now instead. I could have selected that to something else, but I could easily remap this. Um, I, I should remap it to this. Linked controller. There we go. And then the master would just be set. We'll just set that back to zero. All right, and now let me just make a little, a little something for you out of nowhere. It's not going to be the best. I don't have any effects, nothing crazy, but let me see what I can do. And that's just it. This is a little weird drum kit I've been working on for a while. Stop doing that. Yes, thank you. No property. I gotta bring that back over here. I haven't turned that sound off because it lets me know when uh, I'm not always the best with my visual cues. I have more space to look at than there is to see. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can see this here. This is why we couldn't hear it at first. And see, this is all with the mouse. I don't have a keyboard. I'm not good with keeping a beat. I have to do it all visually by math. I got to know this stuff by using um, MIDI keyboards a long time ago. I understand a lot of what these values are. And I just do everything on a fly like that. <laughs> I'm really excited to actually share some of this through the computer and I'm amazed at how smoothly my laptop seems to be processing and recording this. I'm not streaming it. Only reason I'm not streaming it is because I've had a hard time with my ISP. They've been giving me a really crappy bit of service lately. So alright, what do I want to do next? That RP1 isn't too what other presets are there? Uh Whoopy. This is very, very basic stuff. And even I'm already well aware of that. I'm more so thrilled that I can just do it to begin with. Oh, and a proper way to do that would be to... Snapping on them, I think. Snap. Uh, line. Sure, there we go. I'm supposed to be able to paint, but come on. Is that just a little boring 12 measure thing? There we go. 11, 12 measure. 12 measures, one little simple quarter beat, and you can hear how I'll just start it over. I see that thing will play over itself. That's why sometimes you have to double tap to stop, which I can program one of these buttons here to do now. That'll be one of the next things we get to eventually. And uh, there's so much that I can do with this launch control. I'm really excited. Let's see if I think it gets annoying or if I want to fade it in. And that's just the beginning. Oh yeah, I'm, looking, I'm making my volume clip by doing that. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
Um, just having a really good time here. Yeah, it's incredible. And the main reason that this launch control XL was at least, I'll say, $40 cheaper than normal was because it was used at Guitar Center and it did not come with this. It did co not come with a USB 2.0 cable, which anyone who enjoys electronics and hangs on to a thing or two, you probably have this extra USB 2.0 cable laying around. It's the older style where it's a little square with the flattened corners to make a odd little shape. It was typically used for printers mostly. And I had an extra one of these sitting around from an old printer that I didn't have, but I just happened to hang on to a lot of cables for a long time. And this ended up cutting it. You know, most of these cables are 2.0. I don't need some fancy high-end BS thing. Don't get duped into buying a 3.0 cable when it's just 2.0 protocol being transmitted from the machine to begin with. And that's what I love about this. I'm just really ecstatic that I'm able to work the faders in real time with an external device. I've used M-Audio products in the past, and this was some maybe almost uh, 15, 20 years ago, and they just didn't cut it. The tracking, you see how this goes up and down right with this fader, and for some reason theirs, they would stutter, they would jump, sometimes it wouldn't recognize the fader was going, I don't know. And it, it did the same exact thing, where you just right click on a function, then you click link to controller, and you slide up the function that you want to work that part of the device, and boom, you have it. I have you the same thing with left and right. This is the left and right of the device. That's, uh, what is this? I think this is actual left and right. So I just do the same thing, linked controller. I can link it to, this is the, what happened? Number two, so unlink link the number two knob, and then now we have it going all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Wow, nice. And even on this little Vizio monitor, I can hear the difference. It's not too bad. I'm amazed. Awesome. I'll be mapping this out and saving some kind of template. I'm hoping that this template just kind of saves itself once I map it out. I don't know. That's going to take a little bit of toggling with it. I'm hoping that, oh wow, it's doing something on the screen for that. I will have to get used to that. And that seems like it's something that's right out of Ableton. And who knows? I've always liked Fruity Loops for a bit. I think it does the same thing that any other software does, really. I'm not sure if I'm willing to test that out. Uh, it's just a matter of, of what they're coded to do. I've always had really good experiences making stuff in Fruity Loops. I was thinking about making the leap to Ableton, but, um, you know, just seeing this device that is supposed to be mapped out to work with that program, work on this so well. I'm really astounded. But there's always the there's always the instance where I can actually run Fruity Loops inside of Ableton as well. I can actually make this its own MIDI tracked thing, and so that way any MIDI information going into Ableton is gonna go into the same channels in Fruity Loops. And that'd be pretty wild. It might be a little unnecessary for some people, but I think it's a lot of fun, especially if you're a solo musician and you want an easy way to have a background band. This is a great application for that because instead of having to pay six of the guys to go with you and have your drummer and this and that, and even if it's just hard to network, it's dozens of different reasons, not always just cutting people out, just the practicality of it. You could even record sets with friends beforehand and then just do the live part of the lead for everyone else. This is what I've been looking for for a long time. It's just a mixer that works the program 
real time and I'm, I'm I'm just amazed. Thank you so much. This has been a really wonderful experience. I don't know if I have an actual outro. And yes, I'm sorry that I just kept it on this one little loop, but that's one of the key things I hope to do is just develop things as I go along and share the journey of making a track because it's not always that easy. And I think any of my music friends out there, you know, that will really resonate with you that anyone who's making any type of music puts a lot of time into it. And this is how I happen to make music. And I can't wait to help other people out. Anything, background music, royalty free stuff, whatever, you name it. I'm really energetic. I love doing this stuff. Sometimes I make music that's a bit more intricate. Sometimes I make music that is inspired by other things. I mean, I've even taken MIDI patterns from classical tracks and mapped them into different instruments. And it's all about the software when it comes down to your these types of programs, your digital audio workstation, DAW. There's several of them. Ableton, Logic, I think, is one of them. Um reason i count that as another doll in and of itself but again i've midi mapped fruity loops to reason before and had reason produce all of my sounds using all of the midi information from fruity loops and these can take up a lot of resources on your computer i think my computer only did as well as it did today because i made some basic uh, tuning up and maintenance details on it i'm impressed with the way that it held up so far and this is running the doll on the same computer that i'm producing on so i can't wait to see how it works out when i get my new computer all set up and i start putting the software on that and that's just basically going to be my sound card this is what i'm going to map to the new computer when it comes but it's nice that i was able to sit here and verify everything works let me just do a few more map this to channel six no already did that Oh, wow. I just have to select it. I don't even have to do the full thing. Awesome. All right. It figured itself out. Wonderful. That's moving the pan on all the channels. And this would give me at least eight channels at my disposal. And for what I do, it'd be nice to have a little bit more than that, but you could do a lot in eight channels because I basically put each instrument into one channel and from there, that just works different patterns and everything else. And each of these channels might get a few effects on it in the long run. Right now, you can see they're all effects free. Even the master channel, I take out that initial compressor, compressor that's on it. I don't use the stock template at all i'm just curious what are these mapped to nothing yet it's registering that it's receiving the signal when it makes this little blue mark up here as getting the signal now i can actually just go to the desktop so you can see this a little bit better and it really does work all of it and i have two these other two rows whoops hi that's my old one with the green screen. I was actually trying to do something different. I'll just do it in real time, see if I can add it. Video capture device. Use. There we go. Turn the life cam off. This all the way up. There you go. And now you see my hand in the controller. Nice. Wonderful. And yes, the point is, is that these ones here are not mapped yet. I just did these bottom rows. That's why they're all the same to the left and right panning of the instruments. And for these, I'm assuming it'd be as simple as mapping them to the different functions of the programs. And that's one of the things I'm curious about. I mean, essentially I could map these to whatever I want as far as effects processors. I want to see it work the instruments. No, why did you? Oh, because that went full screen on me. 
No. But I'm just very excited that I managed to get this launch control. And with that, I'm going to sign off. I hope you enjoyed this little exciting video of Fruity Loops XL and Launch Control XL mapping them together. It's not that difficult. I'm sure a, anyone that's looked for it already might know how to do this, but this is a beautiful little machine and I just can't get over it. I'll be making a lot more videos like this. Stay posted, please. And I'm going to be putting together a nice little bare bones machine. I have to insert my own RAM and solid state drive when it arrives. That should be in about another week. But until then, I'm going to be goofing off and figuring out some of the best ways to make music. Thank you.